This is KE6VRK and welcome again to another video. I'm here with KE6WNH and he is going to go over about building a 440 J pole. So let's welcome KE6WNH. Building a 70 centimeter band J pole. First we're going to go over the tools. This is all the tools that you can use at home. You don't need a fully tricked out machine shop, a lathe, a milling machine, any of that. So we did it with simple hand tools and power tools. Okay, now first off, we've got our pliers. These are seven and a half inch lineman pliers. Uh, make sure you get them with a flat, a reasonably flat beak. And we have two identical pairs of 8 inch needle nose pliers and gooseneck pliers. And we use these for manipulating and bending the tuning assembly once we've got that put together. Then we've got our rosin core solder, a 60 to 80 watt soldering iron propane torch and some brasso because we're going to be working with copper and brass so it always helps to have some of this on hand a wad of steel wool and we have a handheld electric drill a number 44 drill bit a number 33 drill bit and a quarter inch drill bit A hacksaw. If you don't have a pair of tin snips, a hacksaw will work just fine. And we have a tubing cutter, and if you don't have a tubing cutter, a hacksaw will work just fine. And we have a vise. This is for holding the work, and bending and cutting some of the metal. And we've got a wooden block. If you have an iron anvil, so much the better but really a wooden block is all you need. Make sure it's hardwood, like maple, which this is, oak, or any other hardwood. We have a handy file. It has coarse on this side and fine on the other side. And we have a quarter inch round file. This is like the kind used for sharpening chainsaws. And we'll use that for making part of the tuning assembly if you don't have a reamer. And we have a screwdriver. We've got a ruler. A permanent marker. Use blue or black ink because you want it to stand out on the copper and make sure you get the one with the ultra fine point. And we have a tape measure. This one has both metric and inches. So for making antennas you're going to want to use metric. It's just a lot simpler. And we have a hammer. Make sure the hammer is spoon-faced or flat-faced, not cross-faced. And we have tin snips. This is what we use for cutting our copper. And that completes the tools that we used to make our J-poles. Now, the parts that we use to make the J-pole antennas. We're going to start with 12 gauge solid wire. You actually don't need more than a couple of inches, but you do have to strip it. Make sure it's nice and shiny. That's where the steel wool comes in. You're going to use probably about an inch, maybe an inch and a half to make the tuning section. Even for a 2 meter or 6 meter J pole, you don't need very much copper wire. And we have two copper caps for half inch copper pipe, a half inch copper T, half inch copper elbow. And then we go into the parts for the actual J pole itself a little 1 inch stub for part of the tuner, an 8 inch base. 8 inch should be more than enough of a base to clamp onto something. And then the small half of the tuner, 
the large half of the tuner and for the, the clamp parts of the tuner assembly we made ours out of copper but you can use something like 0 0.032 or 0 0.040 inch brass and we have these marked off this already has a center hole drilled in it for the SO239 connector you can use an end connector if if you're using 70 centimeter and we have this exactly measured out for the small side of the clamp the details are going to be on the PDF for how to make this part and then we move on we've got the fasteners you're going to need at least three if you're using the through hole fasteners because you're going to need two for the wide side of the clamp and one for the narrow side of the clamp and three matching nuts these are 440 thread 440 thread for 440 antenna and we went with stainless steel but you can use brass uh, try to stay away from galvanized because you're going to run into problems with electrolysis and corrosion and if you're using the four hole mount SO239 or N jacks you're going to need four additional screws and nuts these are only quarter inch length and we actually use this SO239 to trace where we're going to drill the holes on this copper bracket and then of course we have the through hole we use both and these are the nuts to to match up to these they're, they're brass retaining nuts we make and sell these if you want to get rid of the galvanized or nickel plated nuts and go with brass it's a little more corrosion resistant the details will be given at the end of the video and there we have it these are all the materials that we're going to use for making a 70 centimeter amateur band J pole the main piece this is the biggest column this is 494 millimeters long it's half inch copper then we add a half inch copper T to one of the ends of the pipe then on the other end of the pipe we put a half inch cap this one inch long link goes into the side of the T we've added our 8 inch base pipe to the other end of the T we add a half inch copper elbow the one inch link is inside between the elbow and the T and we've added the small part of the tuning section this is 165 millimeters long and you put that into the elbow it's starting to look like a j-pole then finally we cap it off with the other half inch cap on the small end of the tuning now we've bent the strips for our tuning assembly into place this is the small one which goes onto the long end of the J pole notice it has a little number 44 hole drilled in it which exactly fits this 15 millimeter stub of 12 gauge wire and you're going to solder that in there and the other end gets soldered into this little socket on the SO239 which we've attached using four screws and we've bent this into shape and drilled all the screw holes on both parts with a number 33 drill for our 440 thread fasteners and you see the narrow clamp that takes the stub end of the tuning wire goes on the long pipe this is where the wire is going to go and we'll tighten it and we're going to leave this at an angle because the SO239 and the stub tuning wire are going to come out at an angle 
Notice none of this is soldered together, so we don't have to do that yet because we haven't fitted everything together yet. And we finally got the SO239 feed point assembly and the stub tuning wire into place. We're not going to solder these clamps onto the pipes. We're going to solder the body of the J-pole separately. And then the only parts on this tuning assembly for the feed point that you're going to solder are going to be right here and right here. And then you just slip them over the top, solder the caps onto the pipes, and the assembly will be ready to try and tune. KE6VRK here. So now that we have the antenna built, let's tune it. As we turn on the meter, we have it set for 442.006. You can see the match, it's about 50 ohms, and the match is actually pretty good. But I want to change that to, let's just tune it to 446, and you'll see it has a lot of range. I'll just put it around 446. So that is our range, that is what we're working with now. Let me hold this up. So I will move this. I will move this whole area here. Move it a tiny bit. Moving in about a, just a couple millimeters. Let me keep. Let me keep moving it. Let me try moving it up a couple millimeters. As I move it up, there we go. In this position, where this is at right here, this is my match. So we have 50 ohms at under 1.5. Let's see what the display has. So the display has at 446.1 around there, I have 1.4 and it is about 50 ohms. Let's check the graph. Let's do the graphing function and let's see where it resonates at. So you can see where this antenna resonates. We're at 2 and now we are at under 1.5 and you can see still dropping. So this has good range on this antenna and that is how you finally tune the last part of the antenna. So after this, the way this is made, you just tighten these. There's no need to solder anything on here. I wouldn't do that. I would just tighten those, tighten all the nuts and bolts. And that's it. You're ready to use it. And the other nice point that shows up on my other videos, if you hold it down here, it doesn't affect the match. So you can mount it on another pole. Watch, I will touch it and you can see the meters do not even move. So I'm glad you liked the video. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to the channel as we'll be posting a lot of informational concepts and ideas about building antennas using radios. And there's also a PDF that is going to be available. Just check below. 73s from KE6VRK.